Observe an average amateur league football match competition. The rules of the sport state that every game will last for 90 minutes plus extra time added on for stoppages. So far, our subject players have played three minutes of extra time. They are all tired and waiting for the referee to blow the final whistle. But tonight, that final whistle will never be blown. Because tonight, the referee is no ordinary football referee. He is Dr. Mitchell Morris, head of Posnatronics at the University of East Anglia. A perception of time and space within a totalitarian system of government. Within this football match society, the referee is the law. A one-man judge, jury and executioner. The players not only fear him, they also trust him to protect and govern them wisely. Come on, let's try. He is, in effect, a benevolent despot. Today, Dr. Mitchell Morris is working deep undercover to attempt to discover what would happen if this paternalistic power structure were abused by a corrupt regime. The corruption in this case will take the form of playing an endless period of extra time. How long would it take for the masses to realize and revolt? Five minutes of extra time have now been played. Already, it is possible to observe that the player's mental faculties are beginning to slow down. Concentration has become difficult and mistakes are being made. For now, it would appear that the players are still content to blindly obey the rule of the referee. This experiment awaits closure. they have had enough and are attempting to leave the field of play. Yes, please. Back, back on the pitch, please. And you. Back on, please. Not long. You didn't ask my permission. Your name, please. For the first time, the referee's authority is being directly questioned. How long is the referee? Of course, guys. No. His response to this insubordination is swift, and the anarchists are duly punished. It is clear that the players now no longer see the referee as a benevolent despot, but as the leader of a totalitarian regime who will use whatever forces necessary to control and prevent them from leaving the country. The countdown to revolution has now truly begun. In the back, we got that. minutes of extra time, the players stage their first protest. A comical display designed to highlight the absurdity of their society. Although expertly performed, it is, however, the equivalent of a student protest. Well meant, but easily stamped out. Free kick that way, holding onto the ball, indirect free kick. It does, however, serve as the trigger for a much more serious confrontation. You go up there, please. Why did he blow up? Tell us what the problem it's not, is. It's not time yet. I didn't say it was a problem. Can we have the ball, please, keeper? Keeper, come the ball, please. Number eight, please, if you are, off you go, please. Exposing yourself to everybody, off you go. The red card execution of number eight is highly significant. 
After 24 minutes of extra time, the rebel forces now have their first martyr. All respect for authority is now disintegrating. Faced with such an extreme challenge to his society, the referee is forced to go to war with his own people and exterminate all troublemakers. Thank you, Mr. Jane. Off you go. It would now appear that football society as we know it is beginning to crumble. We shall continue to monitor. Stay there. Stay there. Off you go. Off you go. I'm sorry! Experimental. The men who build machines would have us believe that technology is the great liberator, freeing us all to live our lives the way we want to. However, scientific research has shown us that this is a charade. Far from being the great liberator, one machine in particular is society's great jailer. You may know it simply as the telephone. A time displacement theory using telephonic technology. Observe Dr. Adrian Popov conducting field research upon a busy city street. His intention today is to borrow a mobile telephone from a complete stranger. Excuse me, mate. Do you, do you have a mobile phone? Yeah, I do. Can I borrow it? Just to make a really, really mega quick call, emergency call. Could you help me out? Okay, don't run away or anything, because I take you down. Okay, thanks. The experimental's objective is to attempt to keep the test subject captive here for as long as possible, using only his mobile phone apparatus. What purpose do we hope to achieve by this action? As every second passes, we can observe that the subject is moving closer and closer towards his own death. These valuable wasted seconds may not mean much to him now, but at the very end of his life, they could be used to make love to a beautiful woman. Doobie doobie. Or even to carve a funny monkey from wood. <laughs> Thus, the experimental is aiming to open the doors of perception for the subject so that he may achieve enlightenment and realize that it is not the experimental that is keeping him prisoner here today, but his mobile phone. We will continue to monitor developments throughout this broadcast. Other phone experiments you can try at home. In this simple test, Dr. Barrow will attempt to create a negative association with the domestic telephone system unit through the methodology of a nuisance phone call. Today, we will be directly targeting takeaway restaurants. Hello, this is Dr. David Barrow. Hello, Dr. David Barrow. I would like to order one chicken boomer. Thank you. And a plain naan. Thank you. Change my mind, a Peshwari naan. Thank you. Anything else, sir? Did I say plain naan? Yeah, Peshwari naan. No plain naan. You said plain naan first, then you said Peshwari naan. Oh, okay, plain naan. Plain naan. You want a plain naan, yeah? No, I want a Peshwari naan. You want a Peshwari or plain, sir? Plain. Plain, yeah? No Peshwari naan. No Peshwari naan. Yes, Peshwari naan. We've got two naans, sir. Like a Peshwari or plain, sir? Plain naan, yeah? Actually, I've changed my mind for shwari naan. Thank you. Actually, can I have a plain naan? Yeah. No, a shwari naan. Oh, come on. Plain. Plain naan. Shwari. Yeah. Come on, it's not time to play games, sir, please. Okay, a shwari naan. A shwari naan, yeah? Plain. Hold on. Lulvai. Some map is on the phone, man. He's asking for shwari naan and then plain naan. Plain naan, then shwari naan. What kind of man? 
Come in and have a look. Come in and check this out. Hey there, how can I help you? Hello. Um, I was just ordering a chicken buna. Right. And a peshwari naan. Yeah, sorry, now you got that peshwari, no problem. Oh, no, plain. So you want plain naan now? Peshwari. No problem, we'll see you at 615. Bye-bye. Peshwari. Back at our scientific street experiment, four minutes have elapsed, and still the subject remains captive to his own mobile phone that is being held by Dr. Popov. The subject appears tense and obviously reluctant to open his eyes to the realization that what he is experiencing here is merely a microcosm of the wasted years he has spent chained to his own telephonic equipment. What's the name? Are you all right? Oi. That's it, mate. You're done. Come on, go. Come on. Finally, after five minutes and two seconds, the subject's addiction to his machine becomes so overpowering that it forces him to take actual physical action against the experiment. Although there is no outward expression of enlightenment, the experimental would like to hypothesize that the subject has indeed learned something today. That it has in fact been his own time that he is wasting, not ours. Back at the everlasting football experiment, and the football state has now collapsed into anarchy. During the last 10 minutes, players have been openly leaving the ailing regime. They believe there is a better life for them elsewhere. Those that have stayed have continued to suffer from the hands of an ever more brutal and desperate referee police force. We have now played 47 minutes of extra time. The situation is now desperate. The football state has been reduced to a paltry population of just three players. We can observe, however, that the referee is still attempting to maintain law and order with his somewhat diminished football society. Center circle, please. The ball can go forward, you can take a shot at goal. You making this up as we go along? No, not at all. You're more than welcome to come in the change room and I'll show you the law book. Touch the ball twice and the referee kick the other way. I said direct shot at goal. That was indirect. That was indirect. You knocked it forward once. From there, please. He was. The catalyst for the total collapse of the experiment finally comes in the form of an unseemly pitch invasion. Come back there, please. After 52 minutes of extra time, the referee finally accepts that it is all over and calls a halt to the experiment. Experimental has reached closure. Next week on Experimental. All right.